Hi everyone, welcome to the 51st webinar in 12D's training webinar series and the last new session for 2018. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. 12D's training webinars showcase common industry challenges, taking a close look at industry best practices and how these can be implemented using 12D products. The aim of these webinars is to upskill 12D users and broaden their understanding of the capabilities of 12D products. We run these webinars regularly and record them for posting through our website and on YouTube. The first 50 webinars from this training series, as well as the webinars from our Industry Solutions series, are available on our YouTube channels if you missed those. During this presentation you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end I'll send through your questions to the presenter for his insights. Today's webinar, Apply MTF Manager, will be presented by Tim Brooks, who has been with 12D Solutions for nearly five years as the 12D Model and 12D Synergy Training Manager. Tim coordinates and writes 12D Model Training Manuals and writes the 12D Synergy Training Manuals. A civil designer with over 20 years of experience in the civil industry both around Australia and in the UAE, Tim has worked on a variety of civil projects including motorways, highways, local roads, industrial and subdivision estates, car parks and rail projects. There are often tools in 12D model that go unutilised. The Apply MTF Manager is one of those. This feature can speed up your initial design setup time and get you into the detail stage faster. For all those still creating their MTFs and functions separately, today's webinar will help. Over to you, Tim. Thanks, Lisa. The Apply MTF Manager has been available since version 10. Our experience has shown that this tool is not commonly being used, which means users are creating their MTFs and their functions separately. Some of the benefits of the Apply MTF Manager are uh, it will use your Apply MTF defaults, you can apply it to multiple super alignments. Uh, you can turn your function strings on automatically in any chosen view. You have the option to use an MTF seed file. And it cleans out any empty models. So it doesn't populate your model list uh, with those empty models. So let's go and have a look at this tool. All right, before you uh, run a function, it is always a good idea to set up your apply MTF defaults. So under the design menu, under apply defaults, apply MTF defaults, you can come and set these up. Now this is the exact replica of the apply MTF um, panel, except some fields are greyed out. But you can come and fill out uh, any items that are common. For example, if you're always interfacing to a survey tin. You can make it a default. You can set things like your standard section separations, uh, your report file names, note the little wildcard there. Uh, that All that's going to do is insert the final function name. And you can use that for your model names as well. So you can see design wildcard and cross sections. If you're going to use the apply MTF manager like we are here, down in the polygons and road boundary models, we can apply the ampersand symbol at the end. This will combine them into one model. So instead of having a vis polygon model per alignment, we just have um, them all included in the one. Again, just go through, set up whatever other settings you want, like map files, what volume options you want to see, and when you're done, hit write. And that saves your default file. That defaults file can then be uh, put into a user library and you can have the same settings for all your projects. It's up to you. All right, now we can run the apply MTF manager. So in the menu that's found under design, apply, apply MTF manager. If you want to use a toolbar, it's on the design toolbar and it's the button there with the green background. Alright, first thing you do when you come into this panel is probably go and set up the defaults. So a little defaults button over on the right there. I'm going to tick that. 
you can include in here things like um, your standard function and MTF prefix or suffix. So I've included des there. You can select what defaults you want to empty your, uh, delete your empty models so that they don't populate your model list. Also, what default options you want turned on straight away. In this case, I'm only generating polygons straight away. And then you can also set the dimensions of your grid width and height. That's this area down in the bottom of the panel here. Okay, so again, make any changes, hit right, finish, and to invoke those changes, simply just um, finish the panel and go and turn it back on again. All right, now we can come up to the top of the panel and we have the selection criteria. So this is how you're going to choose your super alignment. Uh, you can choose it per string, uh, per model. You can even use a view. So if I chose a view, for example, this alignments view, it would extract every single super alignment in that view and populate it down into the grid area. Okay. And you've got your other options there as well for selection. I'm going to stick with using uh, per model. So I come and choose my model over here like alignment 2 and it adds all the super alignments that are in that model to my grid area. So that's these uh, road alignments that have been added. I also have curb returns in here so I want to do those at the same time. So I'm just going to come back up and pick the model for those now as well. This just appends those super alignments to the bottom of the list. It doesn't overwrite your original selection. Okay. So now I can um, run this on all 10 super alignments at once. Come down into the next area. Uh, you have the option to create a chain. So I can put a name in there uh, and it will create all those or recalc, recalc functions into a chain. You could then put that chain into say a design chain. The existing AM functions. This is if you have a, a project already running and you've already run some functions, you can click the function button here and it will populate the grid uh, with all your current functions. And associate them to the apply MTF manager. Uh, this is a brand new project so I don't have that. View display. I'm going to come and pick my design view here and what that's going to do is when we run this all our function strings like our strings and our cross sections are automatically going to get turned on in that view for us. There's the option to run a seed file. We'll come back and have a look at this one shortly. There's the delete empty apply many models. So you're not populating your model list with empty models. So they're all defined and now are defined in the defaults as well, but I can override them here. And then we come down to the grid area. You have the apply column. So this is what it's going to run on. So if there's an alignment there you don't want to run it on, just untick it. The next column is the recalc using existing MTF. You'll notice there's no ticks on in here. Okay? They have not been run yet. The first time we run this, it's going to create them and all these will get ticked on. So the next time we hit the create update button, uh, it will do a recalc instead of a create. There's our function prefixes already in there. You don't have to use the defaults for that. You can type them manually. You can copy and paste from one line to the other. There's our super alignment names that's been populated by the models that we chose. You can also have your prefixes added to your models if you want, just by ticking these on. I don't want to do that in this case, so I'm going to leave them unticked. Then we have our template areas. So you can do one at a time, just click in the cell there, right click and go and pick your template that you want to use. However, in this case, I want to make all my roads the same. So I'm going to group highlight, right click, go browse and select the road left hand side template. Do the same for the right hand side as well. Group select, right click, browse and we choose the road right hand side. For my curb returns, I only run a, run a template around the left-hand side of the road. So I'm just going to 
select the left hand template the same way this time choosing the curve template for my tin interface this is automatically populated with the survey tin because it has picked it up from my apply MTF defaults again if you wish to change one just highlight it right click and go and choose a different tin the boxing column this is a column that you probably will never use again uh, this is for the old boxing rules uh, hopefully you've seen the other webinars on our new um, snippet tri meshes and attributes so you'll be using that way method instead all right you can see our polygons ticked on I'm going to keep those ticked i will just create our viz polygons got the option to turn on our road tins maybe I just want to do that for the four roads but not the curb turns and likewise you got the options to run your depth polygons your tab poles and your cross uh, your filtered cross sections once you're happy with all the information in your grid simply come down to the bottom left and hit the create update button and this process is generating all our MTFs so it's creating the MTFs and the functions all at the same time and as you're used to you get all the OK's there which lets you know that everything has run fine and if I move my panel back over to the left here you can see all our new strings and sections automatically turned on in the view that we defined it's pretty cool all right some other things this panel can do if you come down the bottom here you have a clear grid button so you select that just obviously empties all the information out of your grid uh, sort grid the way this works is say I want to run um, some new alignments I go and pick a model so these ones have not been run yet but I also want to recalc some ones that have so if I go and pick that model you can see that they're ticked on there the sort grid just brings the existing um, functions to the top of the list and the new ones at the bottom all right so the add AMM button this allows you to add another function um, to an alignment so I recommend uh, clearing the grid here you probably go and select an alignment as a one-off you could do multiples hit the a hit the add AMM button and this gives you the ability to run another function along that alignment the delete AMM button this basically disassociates the functions with the apply MTF manager okay uh, that way you can go and delete those functions and MTFs if you wish you have to do that separately still but it just disassociates it to this panel all right if you need any um, further information on that or or can't remember what they do it's all on the help button there down on the right right hand bottom all right I'm gonna finish that now we're gonna run this again uh, but this time we're going to use a seed file so for those that don't know what an MTF seed file is it's just an MTF file that you can pre-populate uh, with any templates snippets and any other settings that you wish so I'll show you uh, we'll go design MTF and normally you just go create in this case I've already got one so I'm going to edit one and I'm just going to pick a super alignment here so it'll allow me to edit it all right if I open up the modifier left hand side here you can see that I have populated it with um, aliases I've populated it with snippet templates so I can use those I've also got a boxing um, snippet in here as well so it can create the payment automatically for me now at the moment these are all active but they don't have to be you can turn things make things inactive as well and turn them on once they're created you can do other things as well like under more you could come and set up your super widening setting settings so you can enable it tell it what strings you want to run on um, basically set that up however you want a base MTF file when you're done 
save and finish then you open up your working folder where that MTF file is come and find it so there's the MTF file there and to make it a seed file you simply just rename it from .mtf to .mtf underscore seed simple as that alright so if we open up our apply MTF manager again come and select a new alignment model what view we want the strings and sections to be turned on in automatically and now we can come and select our seed file so there it is there come down into our grid happy with all those settings this time I don't have to worry about a template left hand side or a template right hand side my seed file is going to take care of that for me the interface is there as per the defaults once I'm happy with all the settings come down to the bottom left there and hit the create update button this one will probably take a little bit longer to run because it's got some more information in it there we go get my four OK's move my panel back over to the left here you can see my new strings and sections automatically turned on we can even go and view them in the 3D view it's a bit bigger I'll come and add my design strings there you go you can see them all there in 3D and because in my seed file I also ran a pavement snippet I could also come and turn on the tri meshes for those as well and there you go all you got to do now is go into your MTF files and you can start doing the detail so adding more detail modifying the strings straight into your detail design okay so hopefully that's uh, showing you a faster way to create your MTFs and your functions allowing you to get into your design uh, even quicker Thank you. Thanks for that, Tim. The recording of this webinar will be available in coming days through our website and our YouTube channel. We've got some exciting webinar topics coming up, so keep an eye on our emails and social media for details. If you need to contact us in the meantime, our details are on the screen now. That concludes our presentation for today. Thank you for all for attending, and we hope to see you at future webinars.